or down on the Cote d'Azur at the bottom of the track. We'll have a neutralised lap before the race starts. We'll hear the gun to hear the race start. And basically what happens is every other lap, the rider at the back of the bunch is eliminated from the race. And essentially the last man standing is going to be the winner. Um, we're obviously going to hope for no crashes. But yeah, every other lap um, we're going to hear the bell and the rider at the back will get taken out of the race. Uh, we just saw a little shot there of the handlebars of that rider. They've got a box on there which will light up when uh, they have been eliminated. So uh, there shouldn't be any excuse for not realising that you have been eliminated from the race. But it does require some quick judgment from the officials, from the commissaires. Um, looking at the replays very quick, look at the photo finish over the line. It can be very, very tight. Just looking at those riders' back wheels. Back, back wheels as they cross the line every other lap. So always a crowd pleaser. Normally an event that we see as part of the Omnium, but now a standalone event here at the European Championships. Always hotly contested, always a real crowd pleaser, like I say. Uh, and also a great warm-up for anybody that wants to compete in the Omnium later this week. But equally, you know, whenever there's a European title on the line, a gold medal, a championship jersey, that's always going to be very special. Yeah, funnily enough, the uh, the elimination and the Madison were the, the first European Championship events, and they've been going for, for many, many years as standalone events held at various different uh, Grand Prix meetings and uh, races over the years. And it's only recently that we've had uh, this full program of European Championships. There you can see the uh, elimination box on the handlebars. So when a rider is eliminated, that box will, will light up and vibrate. The rider's name will go up on the scoreboard, and... And historically, we have a, a judge in the track centre holding up the country uh, of the rider that's been eliminated. As we're looking at one of the most experienced riders uh, in this field, Nico Salonati from Switzerland. Um, there's only two standout riders here that, that have been around for a long time. Salonati is one of them and Rogovac from uh, the Czech Republic is the other. With the exception of those two, we've got a very, very young field indeed here. JB Murphy from Ireland has been around a little while but apart from that Joe it really is a sign that nations are, are trying to get that new blood out there at the start of this four year Olympic cycle or three year sorry Olympic cycle. Yeah definitely short Olympic cycle now so yeah really is time to get those young riders getting that, that, that experience. Um, I think Thomas Boudin from France is the other rider that I picked out here just saw a shot of him there. Yeah sorry I missed him. Um, yeah no no he's another rider that's another one to watch here but like you say a real a real mix of youth and experience but it is it's so, so valuable to have this sort of experience as a young rider part of it is the actual racing and racing against riders from different nations that you won't get to do when you're training at home but a huge part of that is just going to a major competition preparing that for that going through the flight staying in a hotel going through the taper all the other things that come with going to a competition that you can't really replicate quite so well in training at home and you know the nerves of race day all that sort of thing so and, and it all will pay off hugely um, for these riders going forward in the rest of their career yeah and that's an interesting one that i've got on my list of things to talk to you about at some point during the week because the world cup process has changed we've not got these three and four day flyaway world cups around the world that, that we used to have um and you know i'm very interested in your thoughts not now but in your thoughts in you know how that's going to affect riders because that really was sort of a dress rehearsal for the world championships and we can we can do it now because they're they're just changing this thing this uh, vibrating box so uh, y you know that joe is going to affect riders isn't it yeah, and some riders will, will be happy spending time at home training and will know exactly how to prepare for a major competition and sort of not need those race days. Other riders love racing, live for the racing, need that racing to keep motivated. Um, you've also got travel involved when you go to any major competition. So that's always a factor that you need to think about. You know, the more, the more you travel, the more the more lights you have the more jet lagged you are that impacts on your training as well so it sort of swings around about us and we'll see some riders sort of look, look at the race program be happy some less happy but definitely when it comes to track cycling you need to grab any racing opportunity you can get because there are a lot less days of racing than what you get in events like road racing for example so the men's european elimination championships Riders rolling round, and uh, whilst this is a neutralised start, it is the most frantic neutralised lap you will ever see in any sort of track racing. Riders absolutely desperate to get to the front of this race as they start the race. 
like I say, 250 metres of fighting to get to the line and straight away from the off, it's Belgium that are in trouble at the back. Yeah, we, we use the term neutralised very loosely there because, like you say, uh, very, very fast opening lap. F1 jostling for position. We just heard the bell then, so that means next time round, the rider at the back of the field will be eliminated. So all eyes on the back. We're seeing British and Irish riders safely at the front at the moment. But all eyes on the back of this race, and who's going to be first out? Looks like Austria trying to get out of trouble there, and it looks like the rider from Denmark, and that's a real big surprise that Denmark there is eliminated. A team that uh, we saw have great success on the track the last few years, and Denmark the first elimination in this race, and that was Robin Skivel. Yeah, it's a cruel race, just, you know, momentarily out of position, and then that's race over. So um, huge kudos to the guys who've got themselves to the front early on, got kept keeping them safe early on in this race. Of course, as the race progresses, there's less and less riders, which makes it easier to have a better awareness of what's going on around you and, and making sure you're not caught out. But early on, it is incredibly hectic with all these riders on the track. And over the line, rider number 80 eliminated that time round, and we've not got graphics to give us the country or the rider, so we'll just scan down and let you know exactly who it is and sorry that was uh, Mantas Bitinas from Lithuania eliminated that time round and uh, it's it's worth saying isn't it Joe all eyes are on the back in this race you're not looking at the front yeah and also at the bottom of the track because if you're higher up the track you've, you've got somewhere to sprint whereas if you're stuck at the bottom of the track you're not allowed to race in the blue van at the bottom so that's called the Cote d'Azur that's essentially the safety area of the track so it is there to ride on sort of if needs be but you're not supposed to be racing there so if you are found racing on the blue area of the track um, that is bad you're not allowed to do that yeah and there's always that tendency isn't there if you're high up the track and you've got nowhere to go but someone's on your outside you dive up the inside and find yourself putting yourself in basically a dead end with absolutely nowhere to go yeah and that that is a really tough position to be in because you're taking the shorter line but like you say there's nowhere to go at all and you can't go on that Cote d'Azur whereas right at the top of the track there is there is space to sprint if you've got the legs and we've just seen the Greek rider there um, not quite managing to get around that time this race is being run off at an incredibly fast pace here yeah and it was Oroz from Hungary that was eliminated the time before that so uh the back of the bunch there you heard the bell it looks like the czech republic in trouble this time around ukraine just trying to get themselves off of the back and austria who have managed to uh, keep themselves out of trouble up until now and they, he's doing that exact thing isn't he joe going up the inside but having nowhere to go gonna get away with it this time and it looks like the czech republic and uh was that denis rogovac eliminated it looks like it was yeah very close on the line and i'm seeing a little replay Yes, that is the uh, Russian rider eliminated. Czech Republic, sorry. So the rider from Austria, rider number three, going up the inside yet again. He's got away with it three or four times, and the problem is you lure yourself into a full sense of security, and it's Maximilian Schittbauer going up the inside, staying away again. And was it Belarus eliminated that time around? Rider number 17 goes over the line. He knows he's out as well, so very disappointed in himself. And it was actually Bulgaria, sorry, Nikolai Genov eliminated. So very quickly, this bunch is really trimming down. Yeah, you very quickly go from a full field to half a field, and then that makes it a lot easier when you're in the race to be aware of what's going on around you. We're just seeing for the first time the Irish rider there stuck at the bottom of the track. I think he'll be okay this time, but that is a danger zone later on. Yeah, and it was Austria that time around. He flirted with danger. Little spill there, and the uh, Irish rider manages to stay upright. JB Murphy held that up. Rotem Tina from Israel it was that took a tumble. So he'll have four laps to get himself up, and the race has actually been neutralized. So he'll have four laps to get himself up, back on his bike, repaired, and back in the race. I have to say, he bounced up very quickly there from that crash. We're just going to see a replay here exactly what happened yeah he had a front wheel on his left and a, uh, a hip on his right and uh, that was that yeah that wasn't a in in terms of bad crashes that wasn't that bad was it it was you know relatively uh, benign and he'll have a little bit of skin lost but he'll be up pretty quickly yeah so good to see him back on his bike JB Murphy managed to keep both of his feet in the pedals and uh, keep going, so he's okay. And that uh, interesting move there from Tina from Israel goes straight down and sits on the front of the bunch. I like it. Yeah, fantastic move there. And this is one of the few races that gets slower the further through the race that you go. And the race is on once again. 
So the men's elimination race, it's trimmed down very quickly. We've just had one very small spill there for Tina from Israel and JB Murphy for Ireland at the back of the bunch at the moment, trying to get himself out of trouble. And he's doing okay at the moment. We thought they had started the race the lap before. They hadn't. They've just started it now. So he's going to get the bell this time round. Elimination's coming round very quickly, every two laps, so every 500 metres. So approximately every sort of 28, 30 seconds, you're going to get an elimination. And it's JB Murphy for Ireland trying to get himself out of trouble. Yes, yeah, so that was the bell we heard just then. That means next time round, the right at the back is going to be eliminated. Irish Rider doing a brilliant job there of going around the outside. And is the British Rider going to be in trouble there? Yeah, I think he was there that time round. It was the GB Rider, young Will Parrott, who's going to be eliminated. Yeah, he'd been riding really well uh, early on, got himself to the front of this group. Um, so brilliant riding early on, but obviously after that neutralisation, things changed a little bit. So unfortunately eliminated there for the British Rider. Yeah, Italian rider just getting himself in a little bit of bother there, having to uh, use his elbows to get himself out of a hole. Belgium dives up the inside, which isn't something that you want to be doing on a regular basis because he's put himself in trouble. He's managing to hide and uh, just gets on the coat deserve, but manages to uh, get away with it. Look like Belarus there, rider number 13, eliminated that time round. So that was Yehaney Karoliok from Belarus eliminated. And uh, we've still got the French rider there, Thomas Boudat, very experienced, along with Nico Selenati from Switzerland, still in there near the front as well. So the two old war horses managing to stay in there and keep themselves out of trouble at the moment. Back of the bunch and Ukraine eliminated at that time. Rider number 141, Vladimir Zeus. So we've got about half the field left now. And at the back, looks like Poland needs to get themselves out of trouble. JB Murphy with that move a couple of eliminations ago, got himself around the outside, dropped down at the front of the bunch and has managed to stay there ever since. You can see Germany now just looking behind to see where the rider from Poland is. Knows that if he can just keep him there, puts him in trouble. The ride flirting with danger there and almost catching his front wheel on the wheel of rider behind. And I think the Netherlands there with uh, Michael Zylar might have been eliminated, although the camera is focusing on Poland. But now I think we've got confirmation there. It was the Dutch rider out. I'm just going to see a little replay of that. Yeah, Polish rider just makes it. Just sneaks that one. So 11 riders left in this elimination. Goes down to two riders left on the track. J.B. Murphy staying on the front, French rider just on his hip there, Thomas Boudat. Belgium now in that famous light blue, just coming around the outside to keep themselves out of danger. Germany still second from the back, the rider from Israel who uh, took the spill. Rotem Etina just off the back at the moment. So generally, the officials will take the riders out from the bunch. They won't look further down the track. So it's Belgium, I think, that time round, who had absolutely nowhere to go and got caught out. Yeah, nowhere to sprint there. Very, very tight positioning, but um, it's good itself 10th place in this race. And that's when you can uh, you can use the other riders, can't you? If you come around the outside of someone, box someone in, you know they've got nowhere to go, and you can use other riders and the pace of the bunch just to get people into a box and get yourself out of trouble. As JB Murphy's going to have to try and do that very thing, doesn't choose to go around the outside. Sorry, up the inside, and I think he might have just got I away. I think with he that, might though. have done. Yes. Yeah. Wow, what it's a ride there. And the, Moro uh, of Italy out. Yeah, Italian rider's not going to be very happy about that. Stefano Moro takes a relatively early bath. It doesn't really matter in this race, Joe, does it? If you, you know, for, for bragging rights, it doesn't matter if you finish 8th, 18th or 7th. It's, it's the medals that's important. Yeah, you're right. It's not part of an omnium or anything. It's just a standalone event. So, yeah, you want to be top three for your medals. And always just got a problem here for the Russian rider unclipped. Not entirely sure anyone's going to uh, give him. Oh, they are going to let him clip back in. So maybe there was a small incident that meant he unclipped. He got caught up with somebody else. Let's have a look here. No, just unclipped. 
Good luck getting that back in. Yeah, we don't see this happen very often in track cycling. Of course, the sprint riders have the toe straps on when they race. Uh, endurance riders tend not to. Occasionally it does happen, but it is really hard to get your foot back in. Of course, he's a fixed wheel bike, so you can't freewheel. And when you're going fast in the race, you're revving at a very high cadence. So it can be very tricky to try and get that foot click back in. So they have neutralised the race, and hopefully he'll be able to get himself back into this group. Yeah, probably right at the front. <laughs> yeah, why not? Use that uh, opportunity to drop down right at the front of the bunch and uh, Germany I think it was just thought about throwing an attack up the inside thought better of it and uh, the race will start next time round and uh, as we said earlier on Joe this is one of the few races that gets uh, slower the further into the race you go yeah that that neutralized lap at the start com completely hectic very loose use of the words neutralized and then the yeah, like you say can get a little bit steadier as the race goes on a little bit easier to control, a little bit easier to be aware of what's going on around you. Then occasionally we can see the last lap very cat and mouse where you've just got those two riders left in the race. Yeah, almost like a uh, match sprint, isn't it? With just two riders on the track. Not quite track stands, but uh, they do end up at the top of the track watching each other very closely. Thomas Boudat trying to uh, pull off what his compatriot uh, Thomas Benjamin does on a regular basis and win these events. We haven't got Elia Viviani here. He's still uh, got road commitments for the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if he's going to rock up for the Madison and neither was Marco when I spoke to him earlier in the week as uh, Spain it was that time over the line eliminated. So Martorell Haga from Spain eliminated and what are we down to about seven riders now? So round the outside goes France, taking Germany with them. Russia it was, just trying to push them off of the wheel. And JB Murphy, has, uh, he's been in the wars, he's almost been eliminated, he's been part of a crash and he's still managing to uh, get himself out of trouble. And once again, round the outside, it's the rider from Poland that's eliminated and JB Murphy survives and lives to fight another day. Yeah, and as you were saying, we can see the pace just e ease off there. Right, just swing up the track, just a little rest after that sprint. Now just looking at each other, getting themselves back in position for this next sprint. That was the bell. So Boudat again comes to the front with Russia just on their inside. And they'll, they'll look at each other. They'll know where they are. They'll know that they can cause problems for the riders trying to come around the outside of them. Boudat there just does a good job of holding riders up on his hip. And unfortunately, JB Murphy that time around couldn't get himself out of the hole and just misses out. Almost got in front of the German rider, rider number 63, but couldn't get there. So JB Murphy finishes seventh. Thomas Boudat seems to be boxing this one at the moment. The exceptionally experienced French rider. Looks like he's going a little bit head-to-head -head here with Selenati from uh, Austria. So around the outside, 114 knows that he's in trouble, knows that he's got to get out of the box and does a fairly good job of doing so. I think that's the Hungarian rider. No, it was Germany. Well, even that, the, uh, the rider didn't really know who was out that time round. So uh, our graphics are letting us down a little bit here and the uh, scoreboard, but four riders left. France now with Thomas Buda trying to chase down the little attack. Selenati's got to get himself out of trouble here as Russia go around the outside and Selenati looks like he's surrendered and he has indeed. So Mateus from Portugal, Budat from France, and then the Russian rider bringing, sorry, in the middle at the moment, Budat leading out. So Budat's got this under control at the moment. Rostovstev comes up, sits on his hip. They're going to get caught out here if they're not careful, and they do. Thomas Budat there just got caught out. He Pretty did. Sure. He was my call for the win at the start. I thought he was yep. going to, I thought he'd got it sorted, but no. So at the front of your picture, it's João Mateus from Portugal. At the back with the red shorts is Rostovstev from Russia. Opens up the sprint and I think Rostovstev, yes, he's taken this one. 
João Mateus from Portugal surrenders the win and over the line to take the European elimination title from Russia is Rostovstev. And a great win for him. He hid for most of that race, Joe, and that is so often the key to winning an elimination race. Yeah, the, the rider that we're not talking about um, is, is probably going to be key here. You know, we're talking at the, about the riders at the back that are playing with fire, you know, a few times. Are they going to say in? Are they not going to say in? We talk about the riders at the front who are in a safe position, but of course using a lot of energy there riding into the wind. But yeah, you're exactly right. Riders that we don't speak about much um, come good at the end of this elimination race and very well deserved win there. So Sergei Rostovstev from the Russian Federation takes the win in the 2021 UEC elimination race. UEC being the Union of European Cycling, the governing body for these European races. Thomas Boudat there and Nico Salonati. Boudat from France, a little bit disappointed. Salonati, the local home favourite, doesn't manage to get on the podium. And when I was speaking to Franco Marvulli earlier, um, former world Swiss, uh, world champion for the Swiss, um, he was saying that Salonati was... Uh, really up for this and looking to get a medal as uh, Rostostev kissing the uh, kissing the finish line and really celebrating uh, the win I think he's uh, <laughs> I think this means a lot to him Joe yeah that's great to see it's always brilliant to see riders celebrate like this like you said not got a huge crowd on this velodrome just seating on the one side down the home straight there that we just saw but um, nonetheless still lapping up the atmosphere and really enjoying that moment so this was the moment that Rostov Stev opened his sprint up with a lap and a half to go. And you can see there that even at this point, you could see that the uh, his competitor there, rider number 114, Jao Mateus from Portugal, didn't really have the legs. He got out of the saddle and tried to hold him off, but that far out, he was never going to be able to get on terms. And over the line, Rostov Stev realises that he's uh, uncorked a fairly big result there going into this uh, this new winter of track cycling with the worlds coming up and the new uh, the new format for the uh, the world cups that are going to be much shorter than they were before and not the big flyaway events don't go away we've still got the finals of the men's and women's team sprint coming up after this break Welcome back 